Alright, what's up? Transformers 3. Now, I really had no idea what to expect of this movie. Um, I was not looking forward to it at first because, you know, I really, really was not a big fan of the second one. Uh, but when this movie came out, it started to get um, a lot of good reviews from uh, people I really trust who also hated the second movie. So that got my me um, pretty excited, even more excited, because so I could actually see how good this movie was. Now a quick res retrospective of uh, the first two Transformer movies. Um, the first one I haven't seen in a while. I remember liking it at first, and I've seen after seeing the you know the last two. When I look back and um, watch it, I realize how good it was, actually. I, I don't know, I think the second movie made it kind of look bad and make Transformers look bad. And I don't know, I've seen some clips of uh, the first one again, like when it's on TV, and it's actually really good. Um, yeah, but then the second one came out, and it was just, I, I had no fun with it at all, as did many others, but it was just so poorly executed and ran way too long. The humor was stupid and never funny. And the action was just boring. I really, I really did not have a fun time with it. Okay, now the third movie. I really, like I said, I really did not know what to expect of it. I don't know. It looked like there was a lot of um, action in it, and uh, the action was said to be cool. So I went in with the, so I went in with an open mind, and um, yeah, it wasn't very good. It wasn't as bad as the as the second one, but it really wasn't as big of an improvement that I really wish it could have been. Now, I've never really been uh, too concerned about the plot in um, Transformers, um, mo Transformer movies. Well, you know, in, in this movie, the plot really is kind of convoluted and not. I didn't really care about it much. I can't really say much about it without giving a lot of stuff away, but basically what you need to know is the Decepticons again come back and start attacking, and, um, and the Autobots find a leader Autobot, uh, Sentinel, and uh, bring him back, which is a good thing. Also, uh, Shia LaBeouf's character, Sam, whatever, uh, has a new girlfriend besides Megan Fox, plays by Rhoda C. Huntington, and he's also been recognized as, you know, a hero for his work he's done um, with the Autobots and everything. That's basically all you need to know. You'll, there's a lot of plot twists in this, and stuff in this, but, you know, you'll see when uh, you watch the movie. Now, um, you know, a lot of people are in this movie. Um, of course, Shia LaBeouf's back. Um, Josh Dummel is back. Tyree skips in. Julie White and Kevin Dunn, and um, some new people, uh, of course, Rosie Huntington replacing Megan Fox. Also, Patrick Dempsey is, is in this movie, John Malkovich, and Francis McDormand, who are all really good actors. And they do display their acting skills in this movie. I just, you know, didn't see anything really special about them. So yeah, like I said, this movie isn't really good. It's okay. Um, this movie does have a lot of things, um, that, you know, improved it from, you know, the second one. They fixed a lot of things, but there are also a lot of problems I had with it. Let's start off with the good things. Now, first of all, the action is a lot better than the second movie, even though this one also runs way too long. Um, it did, I did, I was a lot more entertained by the action scenes in this movie than I was in the second one. The cinematography and editing style of this one I think um, really made, I, I don't know, the second one just was way too fast and I didn't, I couldn't tell what the hell was going on in any of the scenes. This one I think and kind of set up action scenes a lot better so you could really um, know, you know, what was getting blown up and where, what, at, where, what action scene, where the action scenes were taking place and they chose a lot better, you know, kind of locations for uh, the action scenes, the cities. In Transformers 2, the action scenes took place in a desert. No, cities are much better. That's what I realized. In the Transformers movie, the ep the epic final action scene took place in a city. Same thing with this movie. In the second one, it took place in a desert, and it wasn't entertaining at all. So yeah, action directors out there, choose cities for your action scenes. If you're a moderately good director. I also thought the humor was at some time pretty funny. A lot of it sucked, but I thought um, the humor was done better and the characters like like John Turturro's character and all those other goofy characters except Ken Jeong in this movie um I thought were all much better in their roles than the second one and weren't just stupid and annoying and I didn't hate them this movie also made a lot more sense and wasn't just dumb shit that was in the second one um I think it, this one was a little more hardcore kind of it I don't think it was as uh just just stupid you know in the second one, I just realized that Michael Bay could do anything that he wanted, and it didn't matter if it looked like a character died, it, he was going to come back to life. 
Also, another good thing um, about this movie, they took out those two fucking annoying robots voiced by Tom Kenny in the first one. Those two gangster robots. Oh my god. Thank god they were out of this movie. They annoyed the shit out of me. They are not funny at all. They took up way too many screen time. <sighs> alright, alright, calm down. So yeah, that's what made this movie better than the second one. Now, this is what uh, keeps it from being as good as the first one. First of all, Michael Bay needs to realize you don't make an action movie so fucking long. Now the thing is, whenever like I uh, someone criticizes like Transformers or whatever, and you know for just you know not being good, a lot of people use the excuse, "Well, hey, you're not looking for an Oscar movie. It's just a fun time." I'm all for that. Do I walk into a Transformers movie looking for amazing plot and acting? No, I don't. What am I looking for? I'm looking for some kick-ass action and some hot chicks. I want that done in a 98 minute movie. I don't want an almost three hour long movie filled with b a bunch of robots kicking ass. And this movie, again, is 155 minutes, only four minutes shorter than the second one. one it runs way too long and it feels so long. I really cannot take so much cliched action scenes with robots punching each other and shit. I mean, I j it, that needs to be in a short 80 minute thing. That's what action movies are for. Just go in, have a quick fun time. I don't know, Michael Bay needs to stop putting so much writing into the movies. He needs to just cut it short and just ha make it a, f a, a short fun experience. Not have me dying in the theater waiting for this these robots to fucking just kill each other and then that'd be it. Also, the really good action in this movie is towards the end. And, uh, but at that time, the action got really cool, but it did r run way too long, and there was a lot of stuff I really didn't like in, um, the first half of the movie. Another big problem is there are a lot of, um, main characters who are Autobots and Decepticons, but the only auto the, the only robots that I know are Megatron, Optimus, uh, Sentinel now, and Bumblebee. There are a bunch of other robots in this movie, um, that, who die. And it's supposed to be a big, you know, scene. I looked the ro who, which robots died at the um, when I got out on the internet. I they look exactly the same. They all look exactly the same. I didn't know which characters were dying. I can't tell the difference between Scar Star Scream and Ironhide. I didn't even know who Ironhide was until I looked it up on the internet after I saw the movie. I didn't even know Star Scream was in this movie. Another thing, take those two miniature robots that are walking around out. They are annoying. I hate their little comments about the fucking dog they have. Also, there really isn't much explanation at all about um, Megan Fox's character not being in this movie. At, like, at the end of the second one, I think, they were acting like they were going to be in love forever, and they were, you know, madly in love and would be for, to, with each other forever. The only... They, Megan Fox is only uh, mentioned once or twice in this movie, and we just know that she broke up with Shia LaBeouf's character and is now going out with Rose and Huntington. I don't know, I, I would just like some more explanation on that. But Michael Bay doesn't give a shit. One more complaint, and then I think I'm done with this movie. Ken Jeong in, is in this movie. And if you people probably know him from a bunch of other comedies, like, you know, he's the crazy Asian dude in the, um, in the Hangover movies. He has a really long sequence in this movie that's supposed to be funny. It was it was moderately funny in some parts. It went too long. It was awkward and just <laughs> it was really stupid and uh, weird. It was just really weird. I had no idea what the fuck that was all about. Okay, so overall, I'm probably gonna give this movie a six out of ten. I'd say my thoughts and feelings on this movie are mostly negative, but I, I it's a six out of ten because I think I think someone who you know was like me and was really disappointed by the second one and wants another good Transformers movies should probably check this out because you know it it improved on a lot of things, but I really don't think you should run out in the theaters and pay a bunch of money to see it. I just say you know rent it. All right, so see you guys later.